Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about the cost of delaying on your dream, doing it the hard way, slugging through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet, head and knees looking for the sunset, heading the, to the gunfight with a butter knife. All these metaphors I use, they all speak to one thing, being unequipped, being ill-equipped to win, and... All of that is what I call delaying on your dream because if you're not equipped to win, you are having an impact on your ability to create what you want to create in your life. The time freedom, the income, the adventure, the fun, the magical moments, the contribution, the difference you can make in people's lives. All of those things are impacted when we show up to the gunfight with a butter knife and we're unequipped and ill-equipped. And that's what I call delaying on your dream because we're delaying on you showing up in power, in profit, and having fun while you do it. And frankly, it's something that people get caught up on quite a bit because let's be real, what it takes to win doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. And it doesn't happen because you have a full bank account. It doesn't happen because you've got uh, a great childhood with nothing but lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows in your past experience with your parents or your family or your heritage or whatever background you have. It doesn't happen because you have the right ethnicity or the right gender or the right socioeconomic status. It doesn't happen because you've got the winds of favor pushing your sales in the direction of your dreams. It doesn't happen because of the market, the economy, your rates. It doesn't happen because of your supervisor. It doesn't happen because of your spouse being supportive. It doesn't happen because of any of that. It happens because you decide for it to happen. Your dream doesn't happen because the winds of chance are working in your favor. Your dream happens because you defiantly resolve to the core of your soul. You will not accept anything less than your dream, period. And you will do whatever it takes to make your dream real, period. You cut yourself off from any other option but your dream. In other words, your dream has very little to do with circumstance. I'll go as far and as bold as to say it has nothing to do with your circumstance. And it has everything to do with your standards, has everything to do with your commitment, has everything to do with your resolve, has everything to do with you just deciding and you getting connected to that infinite part of yourself, that divine part of yourself, that unlimited part of yourself that says, when I'm committed, ain't nothing going to stop me. When I'm committed, it doesn't matter if the doors are slammed shut. I will go through the window. I will crawl through the chimney. I'll go full Santa Claus on the shit. I'll go full Santa Claus and do whatever it takes to win because I'm more committed to conquering than I am to my comfort zone. I'm more committed to my dream than I am to convenience, comfort, and having things come easy to me. That's the mindset of a winner, of a champion. But in order for you to manifest your dream, you've got to get connected to that infinite part of yourself that unlimited part of yourself that realizes you are the cause, that circumstances are not the cause, you are the cause. When you get connected to that infinite part of yourself, when you realize that circumstances don't have the power, you have the power. That circumstances are simply a reflection of old thoughts, old feelings, old habits, old routines, old behaviors. But you're the source. You're the cause. You're the common denominator. You are the one variable that has sourced your world. And sure, there are other people and other events and other situations that interact with your world. But you get to decide, are those stumbling blocks going to hold you back or are you going to turn them into stepping stones? Are those so-called setbacks going to hold you back? Or are you going to use them as setups to become better and a bigger version of yourself? Are, the, are those winds of resistance going to blow you against the rocks? Or are you going to tilt your sail and tilt your rudder, adjust your sail and adjust your rudder so you can use that wind 
that once was pushing you towards peril, pushing you towards those rocks. And now you're using that same wind to propel you to your dreams. All of what I'm saying so far is simply this. You are cause of your life. You are source of your life. You are the designer and creator of your life. You are not the creator of your life. We have a creator that we have the gratitude in our hearts if we believe in a creator, knowing that we are blessed with so much that we are not the creator of the universe, but there is a creator of the universe that created us and for which we are thankful and grateful and we're humbled to be able to surrender in our maker's arms and say, use me, use me as a conduit of contribution, use me as an instrument of service, use me to make a difference in the world, happen to be the best mother, the best father, the best husband, the best wife, the best brother, the best sister, the best son, the best daughter, help me to be a light in the darkness. So there's that sense of surrender to purpose and surrender to calling and surrender to our maker. But then there's also on the flip side to surrender, there's choice, there's intentionality, there's purposeful intention. There's a choice and a volition within our own hearts to be a stand for our life, to be a stand for our dream, to be a stand for our purpose and to not buckle like cheap lawn furniture just because an obstacle comes in our way, just because we might have a constraint of time or money. But we decide by virtue of having clarity about truth to say, you know what? While there may be limitations in my circumstances, I'm tapped into the unlimited. I'm tapped into the unlimited source that created the heavens and the earth. And when you get connected to that unlimited source, there's no stopping you. When you get connected to the truth that when you decide and you commit to your dream, ain't nothing going to stop you. That's when all a matter of magical divine orchestration and possibility and an avalanche of awesome starts to unleash in your life because you're focused on unlimited source, unlimited availability, unlimited opportunity, not lack, limitation, scarcity, and constraint. Wherever your attention goes, your energies flow and your results show. So what is the cost of allowing circumstances to hold you back and delay on your dream and show up to the gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped, ill-equipped, heading east, looking for the sunset and showing up without an effective proven plan to win in your business? What's the cost in delaying on your dream? Well, that's a good question. That's what we're going to be talking about today. What is the cost? Well, the first cost is this. The first cost, and I've got some uh, little notes I'm going to put up on the screen if you're watching this. The first cost is simply this, that there is lost revenue. For every single month that you don't have a proven plan in place, you're leaving at least ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month on the table. And lost deals from your database, if you have one, for example, if you have a database, you should be getting a hundred or rather three deals per month for every 100 past clients. So do the math on that. If you have 100 past clients, that's three deals a month. If you're making three Gs a pop, that's like nine or 10 Gs a month in lost revenue just in your database alone. If you don't have a proven plan to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, every single one of those top producing realtors who does over 20 transactions a year is worth at least one deal a month. You do the math on that. If you could be and should be working with say five realtors, and instead of working with top producers, you're working with duds, you're working with the bottom feeding, whining, simply complaining, jelly donut eating low producers. Instead of having a realtor who's sending you a deal every month, you might get a realtor who you know is constantly berating you and barraging you with questions and is constantly micromanaging you and bringing drama and trauma and friction and annoyance and frustration and all a matter of infliction of emotional turmoil into your world and into, into your space. You could be working with someone who's fun, who has ambition, who has great synergy with you, who's sending you one deal a month, who just lets you do your thing, lets you just dance in your strengths and do your thing. They give you freedom. They trust you. They respect your expertise. And so every month that you don't have one of those realtors working with you, working on your terms, not theirs, it's costing you at least 
three G's a month per one of those partners. What if you had five of them? That's 15 G's a month, right? And if your average commission per deal is more than three G's a pop, then it's even more than that. So it's easily costing you 10 G's a month minimum. Chances are it's more like 15, 20, 30 G's a month to not have the proven plan to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, put you on their speed dial without the hell of cold calling or kissing ass. It's costing you real revenue, real zeros and commas in your bank account to be going to the gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped, ill-equipped, not being able to attract top producing realtors, not being able to mine the gold from your database, not having the right technology, not having the right campaigns, not having the words that work, not having the systems. It's costing you real dollars to the tune of at least ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. If you combine all that, chances are it's even more than that in cumulative revenue lost left on the table, left to your competitors who are substandard, who don't care as much as you, who have substandard rates, substandard service, and substandard experience for the clients. And these clients are having to endure that and settle for that because you're not showing up in a way that allows you to get that business, that business is bypassing you and going to your competitor. That's called the cost of delaying on your dream by being unequipped and ill-equipped to win. Head into the gunfight with a butter knife. That's just the first cost. You think about that revenue, what it can do for you in terms of money you can invest in a top talent team, in terms of money you could use to go on adventures and magical moments with your family and connection and fun. We could talk about that money that you could use to be able to set up infrastructure and invest in your business to grow even more with more marketing and more technology and top talent team and delegation. That's revenue that causes all a matter of contraction and limitation in your business because it's lost, because you're not taking that money and putting it in your pocket where it belongs. So that's the first cost of delaying on your dream and doing it the hard way. The second cost is lost time. You think about it. If you want to get to half a million a year, for example, you can do it the hard way and take two decades and still never even get close to getting to that level because you're in your own way, your own bottleneck. You don't know what you don't know. You're leaving money on the table in your database. You're leaving money on the table with your referral partners. You're leaving money on the table with following up. There's all kinds of deals falling through the cracks. You're getting deals poached by competitors. And so instead of being able to take a quantum leap to that 500K, shortest path to the cash without messing around doing it the hard way, you're limping along with incremental micro improvements, maybe add an extra 5K, an extra 10K per year. But it's these itty bitty little improvements that it almost makes it feel like you're watching paint dry because it's just such a long, grueling process. And meanwhile, what you could accomplish in a year or two or three you never accomplish after a decade or two or three because you're your own bottleneck and you don't know what you don't know and you continue to show up to that gunfight with that butter knife and you're getting bludgeoned. And the worst part is people, once they get over 100K, they get complacent. They say, yeah, I'm doing better than most. Here's the problem. Good is the mortal enemy of great. So if you think you're doing relatively good, the death rattle to your success is letting that get to your head, softening the problem and saying, hey, I'm not doing too bad. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing better than most. Good is always the mortal enemy of great. If you want to achieve greatness in your life, if you want to feel the juice of constant and never ending progress and ascension and expansion, the adventure of life, of course, is always going to be in progress, not stagnation. You've got to ensure you don't get complacent by feeding yourself this softening self-talk where you say, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing better than most. Instead, you want to say, I'm doing great and, or I'm doing good and I'm ready for that next level. I don't want to be sliding down old mountains. I want to be climbing new mountains. And so you're always pursuing that next level. You never settle for stagnation. You never sit on your laurels because what happens is you start to coddle your comfort zone, you start to stagnate, you start to get complacent. Next thing you know, you're losing time, time you can never get back. You can always more, make more money, but you can't get that time back. You can't get that, that time back that you could have been spending with your family. You could have been spending with your spouse, your significant other. You could have been connecting with those you love, 
but instead you're in the office. You can never get that time back when you miss that dance recital or that ball game for your kids because you're in the office instead of being with those you love at such a time that matters most to them because at the end of the day, most people, certainly your kids, equate love to T-I-M-E, time. People equate love to time. And if you're in the office with the office ball and chain around your ankle because you haven't figured out how to delegate, how to lead, how to empower, how to automate, how to systematize, and you're the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats, doing everything yourself, you're losing time that you can never get back. Magical moments you can never get back. Special memories you can never get back. Teachable moments you can never get back. And your legacy is being a walking paycheck instead of being an influence in your kids' lives, an influence in your friends' lives, an influence in your community's lives, an influence in your spouse's life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to come to the end of my life, take my last breath, and feel this regret that I spent all this time in the office, but I never took the time to really set my priorities straight and start focusing on the main things and making the main things the main things. Focusing on time with my maker, time with those who I've been granted to steward, my wife, my kids. I've been there, done that. I used to grind, grind, grind because I thought grinding was the way to be secure. I didn't realize that I was living a presupposition of being insecure by virtue of living in fear. I was living in a presupposition, God doesn't got me. So I got to go and hustle. I got to grind. Otherwise, I'm going to slide backwards. And so I was living in this fear state, not even knowing it. And what that did is it had me work, 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 and sacrifice so much time for my family, so much time for my wife, so much time for my friends. And meanwhile, I'm tired and I'm burnt out and I'm depleted. And those who I love most are getting the dregs, they're getting the fumes, they're getting the depleted me, not the empowered me, not the full cup me, but the running on fumes me. And I realized through a divine encounter with my maker that God's got me, that God loves me, that God has the best for me. He have, has plans to prosper me, not to harm me, plans to give me a hope and a future. And I just allowed that to sink into my core, into my essence, into my being. And I just allowed myself to just soak that in till I just let go of the fear. All of a sudden, I started to shift my priorities. I started to set up my day to win by having time on my knees with my maker, just getting connected to source, getting connected to what really matters. And I just I rearranged my schedule so I had more time with my kids. I rearranged my schedule so I had dance parties after I got off work, rock the tunes and just have fun and be in the celebration space with my family and my kids. I shifted it so I can have more time with friends. And what's amazing is as I'm starting to shift all this, obviously I'm having a lot more fun. I have space now for energy and joy and peace and embracing the moment, enjoying the moment, savoring the moment. But I'm also in a space where I'm more productive. Imagine that because I have more energy and I have more juice in my tank. And I'm just in the flow and I'm in surrender and trust. So that's what I want for you guys. I want you guys to experience what I experience. Surrender and trust. Just surrendering with total trust and getting connected with what really matters most in your life and aligning your life and aligning your schedule with what matters most. But if you're unequipped and ill-equipped and you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, by virtue of necessity, you almost have to grind more because you have no other access point for leverage because you're not setting yourself up to win with a proven plan. That's what I call delaying on your dream. That's going to cost you time you can never get back. And that is the most valuable commodity, the most precious commodity we have is time. I'm sure you'd agree with that. So that's the second thing. The second cost of delaying on your dream is time you can never get back. The third thing is lost opportunity. Partners that you wouldn't have attracted, which would have given you referrals that you could have captured had you attracted those partners, but now you didn't have the opportunity because you just were under the radar or you're repelling them instead of attracting them. Just by virtue of heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, you're usually repelling them instead of attracting them because guess what? Guess what? All your competitors are doing the same thing you're doing. 
They're saying the same thing. They got the same spiel. They got the same song and dance. So you're leaving money on the table by virtue of repelling because you're just another Joe Schmo LO and you are repelling them because you have nothing unique or compelling to attract them. So you got to just feed more gravel into the funnel. Hopefully something will come out of that. If you throw enough yogurt in the fan, hopefully something will stick, but that is time consuming. That is life energy sucking and it's costing you opportunity. It's costing you clients, it's costing you closings, it's costing you referrals, it's costing you repeat business, it's costing you partnerships, it's costing you the referrals from those partnerships, it's costing you referrals of partners, of referrals of partners, of clients, of referrals of partners of clients. Like you can see the connection. There's so many interconnected parts. And when you're disaligned with having a proven, effective marketing plan, marketing systems, if you're disaligned so you continue to get in your own way and you let, you know, stinking thinking hold you back and old patterns that aren't serving you, old habits that aren't serving you, procrastination and feeling inadequate and feeling lack, limitation and scarcity and feeling anxiety and feeling worry and not having a plan and chasing bright, shiny objects. It's almost as if I've heard this before, right? It's almost as if I've heard this before. Imagine that. And it's probably quite novel to you to consider that you're not the only one who deals with this. This is a common human plight, right? So welcome to the club. You're in good company if you can relate to any of this stuff. But opportunity doesn't go, doesn't get lost. It just goes to those who are committed and are and are aligned with victory. That's it. Opportunity is not lost. It just goes to those who are decisive, committed, and aligned with victory, which means they cut off from any other option. They cut themselves off from any other option. So when you lose that opportunity, it's not that it's lost. It's going to your competitors who are committed, more committed than you are, more aligned to victory than you are. And the, 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 the part that sucks about that is that in many cases, it's not necessarily that they are more heart connected to purpose. It's not necessarily that they're more heart connected to mission or more committed to serving your clients with excellence. It's just that they're more defiantly committed. They're willing to pay the price more than you are. So what sucks the most about, in my perspective, is that these clients are not being served. There's an opportunity not being captured for them to get your heart and your first class service and your commitment to serve those clients with absolute excellence and integrity. And then they get served by some other company or other provider just by virtue of them being in the space and being more committed than you are in terms of the marketing, but not necessarily the mission. They may not have a heart mission, a heart connection to the mission to serve those clients with excellence. Imagine the magic that happens when you align your heart connection to mission and purpose and making a difference in these clients' lives and really caring about these people as human beings. And at the same time, having a kick-ass marketing system, a kick-ass marketing plan, and having total alignment in your soul and your spirit with you being defiantly committed to victory and bringing your best self every day, growing and expanding every day, becoming a better version of yourself every day. Imagine the magic that happens when you align yourself at that level. Unlimited possibilities, right? So lost opportunity is a big one. How about this one? Lost impact. Lost impact, clients that you couldn't serve or you didn't serve by virtue of the fact that they got poached by your competitors. Partners that you didn't change their lives and weren't able to change their lives because they went with lackluster alternatives just by virtue of the fact that you're repelling them because you don't have the right approach. It's not enough to be the best. They got to experience something unique and different, different that has them believe that you're the best. It's about perception. Perception is truth in this case. So lost impact. Clients you're not able to impact. Partners you're not able to impact. And then of course, it's the ripple effect of that in terms of the impact you can have with your colleagues in your office, if you have any. Being the leader who makes a difference in those people's lives, who's worthy of emulation, who has an attitude, a philosophy, a perspective that inspires, that uplifts, that's worthy of emulation. To be the father and the wife or the husband 
uh, the, the father or the mother, the husband, the wife, who leaves a legacy of impact, of service, of contribution. See, there's a cost when you do it the hard way and you're heading east looking for the sunset and you're unequipped and ill-equipped. There's a cost to the impact you can make in the world. If you're encumbered with scarcity of money, if you're encumbered with feeling lack, limitation, and scarcity, if you're encumbered feeling depleted and defeated and frustrated, you got to be no one that's impacting people in your life, in your world, your family, your community. It's impacting the impact you can make in the world. It has you limping through life with shackles on your ankles. That's no way to live. That's not your divine calling. You're called to so much more so that you can be a light in the darkness. So you can be an instrument of the maker above to make a difference in people's lives, to liberate people from suffering, to liberate people from encumbrances that keep them in suffering. The other cost of you continuing to do it the hard way, continuing to slug through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet, which by virtue of that is delaying in your dream is lost fun and adventure. For those of you who like having fun like me, you got to be knowing that missing out on that adventure is a big blow because I mean, what's life without that fun and adventure? It's dry. It's dull. It's dry bones. It's not much fun. And it just becomes monotonous. We feel like a machine just going through the motions. And we end up living in fear and anxiety. That's no fun. That just zaps our energy. It causes, it costs us in our health. It costs us in our mental and emotional well-being. It costs us in our spiritual calling and being valuable in our maker's hands to make a difference in the world. It costs us on just being able to soak up the juice of life, right? One of the th reasons why I love surfing is because it's a metaphor, a beautiful metaphor for life where you see that wave coming. You see the energy building. You see the crest coming towards you. You got to position yourself in the right spot. You got to start to paddle like hell to build up that board speed and build up that momentum. And then when that crest starts to build, there's this anticipation and excitement. And you're just totally in the moment. There's nothing else in your world except this wave and paddling like hell to catch it. And then you get that wave and you drop down that wave and you're heading down that channel and you're just total focus, just going down the channel, and it's just you and the wave in the present moment, and it's an adventure. It's magical. It's just this life-giving invigoration of being in the moment and allowing the energy of this wave carry you. It's There's nothing I can do to fully describe it unless you've experienced it yourself. If you're a surfer, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's just exhilaration at its finest. That's exactly what it's costing you to delay on your dream because you're missing out on those moments because it's like you're paddling with a board that's waterlogged. How easy is it to catch waves when you're paddling with a board that's waterlogged? You're dragging. You can't get the board speed. You're clumsy. The thing's dragging the whole time. You're putting way too much energy and you get pummeled by that wave because instead of having the right board speed, it's just rolling right over you. It's crunching you. It's chewing you up. It's spitting you out. That's no way to live. Some of you, you're living like that. It's costing you the fun, the thrill, and the adventure of really being able to catch that wave and ride it and feel the exhilaration of winning. That's what you're called to live, a live a life of adventure. And lastly, the next, and you know, I'm certainly not speaking these in order of importance, but the next big cost of delaying on your dream, doing it the hard way, is a lost legacy. Or instead of making 200, 300, 500, 600, even a million K, or you know, a million per year, or half a million plus per year, you're eking out a meager existence, or you're doing way less than what you're capable of. You might be capable of making a million, two million, three million, and you're, you know, just doing a hundred K. And for you, that's not your full calling for someone else that might be like upper crust that might be like they're freaking crushing it. But for you, that's way below what you're capable of. So you're losing your legacy. You're losing the impact of your fullest self, your best self, your champion self, and you're settling for second best. The mortal enemy of good is, or rather the mortal enemy of great is always good. So we can't 
tolerate good if we're going to go for great. We got to divorce good so we can marry great. And that's where a legendary, legendary legacy is created from. Just being all in, all in committed, well equipped to win, having world class marketing, world class support, world class mentoring, world class systems, and you're just freaking crushing it. And you're creating a legendary legacy in your leadership, in your impact, in your fun, in your contribution, the difference you can make in the world. And that's the wave I want you to catch. That's the life I want you to create. So if this is resonating for you on any level and you're feeling like, okay, it's time to stop delaying on my dream. It's time to stop showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call, but only if you're committed to adding at least an extra hundred thousand dollars to your annual income. And you're on a hundred percent commission as a, le a residential mortgage professional. And you want to be able to take a quantum leap breakthrough in your income and your commissions then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood in your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at, where you want to be, how we can get you there. If we can get you there, by all means, we will show you how to do that. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we'll have some fun. So if that's something you'd like to do and you'd like to take advantage of that complimentary call, I invite you to do that by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. And uh, go ahead and book the call, and you'll meet with either me or one of my consultants, and we'll show you the path to your breakthrough. We'll give you more elusive clarity on what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business than ever before. No more delaying on your dream. No more doing it the hard way. No more heading to the gunfight with a butter knife. No more slugging through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet. No more head and knees looking for the sunset. Just the shortest path to the cash, period. So again, if you want to take advantage of that, go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. This is Doran Aldana, mortgagemarketingcoach.com, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for hanging with me. Peace.